Hello and welcome back to our series on Fusion 360 modeling for woodworkers. Today what we're going to be looking at is doing a Kumiko panel. Kumiko is the lattice grid work that is common in decorative Japanese woodworking and it has become a huge success in the West among woodworkers. I think it's a combination of fiddly details, beautiful art, and almost no cost because the pieces are so small. So we're going to start by making a little Kumiko panel. So I will select this button for a new sketch and we're going to sketch on the top. It doesn't really matter because this is more like a decorative frame than anything else, but I'm going to start by drawing a center point rectangle. And because Kumiko is generally and traditionally done in a square, we are going to make this a square. Now what we want to do is we are going to create a box and do a single frame of the Kumiko in it over here. Then we are going to copy it across the rest of the frame. Uh, so that should work out quite well. Kumiko is usually mirrored and often double mirrored into a square of squares and it can be repeated endlessly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in here and I will draw a, uh, actually I'm going to do it the other way because it will make it easier for you to see. I'll draw from corner to corner over here and I will make that a guideline by pressing X. Now I think that is probably in the right place. Yes? Okay. Good, good. It's red because we haven't given the outside square any dimensions yet, which we won't for a moment. Now. I'm going to draw another center point rectangle, which is going to be equal on all four sides. I'm going to lo lock it into that crossbar, and I'm going to give it some dimensions. I will give this the dimension of, we are modeling inches here, yes, of one eighth of an inch, so that we have a one eighth inch grid around. Now, this is exactly how it is showed to be done in many of the Kumiko videos that you will see online. And this is a fairly significant problem because it doesn't work. Because if you have this outside edge here at one eighth of an inch and this edge here at one eighth of an inch, this middle section here will actually be one quarter of an inch and it will look completely wrong. So we're going to go back and we're going to get rid of that. And I will show you a much, much easier way to divide these things up. So this piece is not actually going to be square. And that is where everybody makes their first obvious mistake. Now, if I take my center point rectangle and draw a dividing grid in the middle and on one side and on the top, What I can now do is I can make all of those equal. So I will say that the short side of one, sometimes they're a bit hard to pick. You can click and hold and it will let you do that, uh, but I usually just find it a bit faster to zoom in and make sure that the mouse picks the, uh, the small line. Maybe this one, not so much. If you click and hold, it will give you a little menu and now I can say that I want to pick the small one from that menu. Yes. And I want to make it equal to this piece as well. So now all three are equal in size. I'm going to pick the outside ones there. I will call them one eighth of an inch, which is a sort of a standard size for Kumiko in the West. It's not quite exactly what you would see in the Japanese version, but it's definitely close enough. I'm going to draw a uh, center line going over and a center line going up for mirroring purposes. Uh, let's try that again. Draw it from there to the center. If I pick that center line and hit X, and do it for the other one. They will now be guides so they won't actually divide up our Kumiko panel. Okay, so I will say mirror 
and I will double click. Remember, if you double click, you can get the entire shape rather than having to select all the sides. And I will right click on the background and hit repeat and do the same thing with this other one. I will pick the mirror line in the middle and hit OK. And I only need one more piece now to make my Kumiko grid. So I will draw a center point rectangle out to this side. I'm going to hit the equal sign, make that piece equal to the other one that we have up here. Now, the only other thing that I need to do is make sure all the lines line up. So I will say that the outside edge of this rectangle is the same as the outside edge of our panel, and just make sure that all the other ones are lined up properly. Yes, I believe they are. Uh, when we start moving these things around, we will see if there is any problem with those. Okay, so if I now go to Dimension, I am going to pick those inside edges, and I will say it is 2 inches. I'm going to go to the inside edges of this panel over here, and again, I will say that that is 2 inches by clicking on this. Now, if I wanted to make that 3 inches, if I just change 1, it will change the entire panel, and I can go back and make it two inches again. Now, if we're using an, eight, uh, an eighth inch grid here, I would say that we are probably best to use about a two and seven eighths inch square uh, for proportion. If you use an eighth inch panel uh, with a two inch grid, they're going to look rather, uh, they're going to look rather large. Now, if we go through and check all of these, we will find that this piece is not actually connected into the bottom line. So I will say, make this collinear, make them be the same line, and I will scroll in and I will pick these two lines. These are now the same line. I'll just check each of them because if any of them is out, uh, they will look blue and uh, the measurements are not going to line up. All right, so let's actually make our grid in three dimensions. Now, there are many ways to do this, and if you wanted to figure out exactly where your, uh, where your pieces were going to come from, you could do them individually. But what we're actually going to be talking about today is the Kumiko grid work itself. So uh, I'm just going to make these uh, 3 eighths of an inch deep as a single body and not worry too much about it. Okay. So what we're going to do here is we are going to pick one of these squares. I like usually modeling on the top left, but you can take your pick. And we are going to draw our Kumiko grid inside it. Now, you can pick any of these that you want, but you have to remember that there is an orientation. Uh, Kumiko is mirrored, but it's usually mirrored over a pattern of 4 or 16, uh, or sometimes more, pieces in square Kumiko. Uh, oh, the other thing I should mention is this is square Kumiko, which is generally the more traditional way of doing it, but there is what they call triangular or hexagonal Kumiko. It goes by both names because it's a series of triangles usually uh, round in a circle of six. So you make a hexagon from six triangles instead of making a grid of four squares. So I'm going to draw a center line from here to the top left corner, and that will be our guiding line. The thing we need to keep in mind about Kumiko is that it is almost always a series of parallel lines. So I will draw two parallel lines here. They snap to parallel usually fairly easily, but if they don't actually snap, you can always just click on two of the lines and hit this parallel constraint. We're going to be doing that in a moment. Now they are supposed to be symmetrical, so I will say the left and the right are going to be symmetrical around that center line. And the important thing is that as you go along, it can get very messy if you don't dimension your pieces. So I will say that is 1 8 and we're going to use 1 8 inch pieces for all of these. This is a simple pattern, and it goes by the name of the hemp leaf. Hemp plant, uh, as you know, is uh, 
probably one of the most popular plants in Japan. It's actually one of the most useful plants that you will see anywhere. Now if we switch over to making guidelines, what I will do is I will draw a guide from the top corner to the center, and I will draw a guideline up from the corner, the inside corner of each, to the center itself. Now what we want to do is we want to have a line, a line that goes from the inside corner here over and up to be parallel. We will do the same thing on this side. Doesn't matter if it's par not parallel. I'll specifically not draw it parallel so I can show you. So I click on this parallel guide and I pick it there. And now I am going to make these two pieces symmetrical around that center line. I am also going to make these two pieces symmetrical around that center line, and that will mean that all the changes I make on one side are made to the other. I want to make sure that these are actually lines, so I will select them and hit X. Remember, you can toggle back and forth. It's not just that X makes things guides, it's that X makes things toggle between guides and not guides. I will select my dimension tool, and I will pick this piece, and I will make it equal to the other 1 8 inch piece by clicking on it. So if I have to change it to be anything else, I can very, very quickly change it. Now I just need to draw in these other two pieces. I could actually draw one and then mirror it, but I'm going to draw both sides. I'll turn off our guide drawing by hitting X, and I will draw from the side to the corner of our other piece. And I will do the inside section as well by drawing up to the center line. It snaps to be parallel, as you can see. And I will draw down, and this one is not going to snap into parallel. So I will make these lines parallel, these lines parallel. And the one we're missing, as you can see, is this line is, needs to be parallel as well. Now. If I click on the D4 Dimension tool and pick these two lines, I can again make those equal to me, one, uh, one eighth of an inch. And if I drag this up and down, I can see that I have multiple options for where this angle is actually going to go. Now, the only thing that I need to do here is give a dimension, again, D for dimension. And I am going to pick these two lines. And I will type in 125 degrees, and that now turns the entire sketch black and allows me to know where all the angles are. And I think we're good. Oh, this seems not to be exactly 1 8, so we will pick it as 1 8. And we are going to make sure that these pieces are symmetrical around that center line as well. Oh, it doesn't work. We'll go back and we'll make them symmetrical before we give them a dimension. Will we not? No. All right, it doesn't want to make them symmetrical for us. How strange. We will do it another way. Sometimes fusion gets a little twitchy. So we are going to make, <laughs> if I can click in the right place, we are going to make this dimension equal to this dimension. And again, it doesn't want to let us. Sometimes Fusion gets really, really twitchy about putting in dimensions. So we're going to go back a few steps. After we put in these two pieces, we will draw our line. We will make our line equal. And now we are going to be directly in the middle of each of these things. Let's make sure that we get our parallel guides in. I think that's already there. A lot of most of these errors that you see down in the right-hand corner that flash by are actually just telling you that uh, you've already got a constraint. Apparently, it doesn't like our thickness. How strange! Hmm. 
That is very odd. One eighth. No, apparently it really doesn't like that. I wonder why that is. Oh, I am just being silly. These pieces are not actually going to be equal in length. If they were equal in length, it wouldn't actually work out. All right, so we'll get rid of this constraint on us here. And we will set our width to be 1 8. And that isn't a problem. It actually is going to work out to be a one-third to two-third ratio in here. I don't know why suddenly I got the wrong impression on that in my head. All right, so that is our grid work. We will make that 125 again. And that gives us our angles. All right, so we have our Kumiko pieces already drawn for our hemp leaf. So I will say extrude. We are going to make these one eighth of an inch thick. And we will say new body. I will go up here to my sketch and turn the sketch back on. And these are actually three separate pieces, but I'm just going to model them as one. We will say a distance to object, and I will pick the top of my grid here, I think. Yes, I think we're going in the wrong direction, but we'll fix them all at once. And I will say new body. Now I can turn off my sketch. Now I need to be able to mirror that, and I need to know where to mirror it. Well, of course, I need to mirror it directly across the center here. There is no line in the center, but that center line is exactly halfway between the outside edges of this stick. So if I say construct midplane, and I pick those two outside edges. I now have a plane that I can mirror across. So if I say mirror, and I pick, not this face, I pick this body, and I mirror across that center line, I now have my one copy of my Kumiko section. I'll open up this construction folder and turn off that mirroring plane. Now, if I do that same thing, and I pick all three of these bodies, I need to mirror them across the middle. But of course, I already have a middle line, because that's my origin. And if I right-click and hit Repeat Mirror, I can pick all six of these and mirror them across the center, and now I will have four. And that is a beautiful hemp leaf pattern. Uh, if you're curious about the history and the construction of these things, there's an absolutely fantastic book called Making Shoji by Oda Tetoshio. And uh, it is in print, it is available, you can find it online to read. It is just, it is the best book I have ever seen on shoji and decorative kumiko. And this is exactly one of his patterns from it, probably the most famous pattern. Uh, in Japanese, this pattern is known as Asa no ha, which literally means hemp leaf, so uh, you can call it the hemp pattern or the hemp leaf pattern, uh, and it is, uh, it is definitely the most famous. So we now have this little grid here. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to continue on to actually turn this grid work into something. First, we want to fix the problem of the fact that our grid is going in the wrong direction. So let's go up here, edit our feature, and instead of it being one eighth of an inch, we're going to make it negative one eighth of an inch. And that will inset our grid into our panel here. Now, I think our panel is actually three eighths of an inch thick. So what we will do is we're going to make that in the middle of our panel. And then we are going to do some more decorative work. So I will right click on that again. I will say edit feature, and I am going to make this negative one quarter, but I'm going to offset it by negative one sixteenth. And that means we will be right in the middle, not right in the middle. All right, one more time, negative one eighth. Sometimes these imperial measurements get a little confused for me. No, I was right the first time. 
I was just starting from the wrong place with the second one. Profile plane. Let's pick from the top of our other piece so they are at the same thickness. All right, I made a mess of it the first time, but now I have my measurements right. Okay, so that is, as you can see, exactly in the middle of our grid, and it is one quarter of an inch deep. Now, if you were actually going to use this panel for something, the, uh, the thing that you would probably end up doing is making a box from it. That's usually the first thing that everybody does. So I'm going to create a new sketch on our top area, and I'm going to hit P for project. And that will give me the dimensions, and I will pick that outside grid. I don't need to know where the Kumiko itself is, but I do want the outside grid. Now, I'm going to draw a center line in both directions. That's not the center. I am going to draw a center line from the actual center out in both directions. It doesn't really matter how far I go in any direction. I just need to make sure that I go out so that I can see the center line. And I want, did I not draw that center line? From the center to somewhere out here. Yes, okay. I will click on both and I will hit X, to turn them into guides. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw one box and I will draw a second box. Now I want those to exactly touch our grid. So let us take our collinear tool and I will make this edge and that edge the same. I will do the same on the right. I'm going to make these two lines equal in length, so the uh, two outside edges are going to be the same. Then I am going to take my collinear tool and make the outside edge the same as each other in both of these cases. And now all I have to do is go to our dimension tool, or I could hit D, and say that the distance between these two lines is exactly 7 eighths of an inch, which gives me a nice outside edge. Now, if I go to my mirror tool and I pick this box, I can mirror it across that center line. And if I repeat, I can mirror this box across our center line. And now I have four lines that are intersecting each other. Now, you could make this as a, uh, as a mitered box, or you could make this as a lapped box. Uh, the last one I did was a, uh, was a, a lapped box, so I'm just going to make this one a mitered box. I will take my dividing line and put it there. I will mirror that across the center. And I will mirror both of these across the center as well. I could just draw them, of course, but it's probably better practice to get into to mirror them this way. I'm going to go in here and make that into an actual thing. We're going to make the individual pieces this time. I will make one piece and two pieces. I can make these together because they are not touching. And this is on the bottom. So what I'll do is I'm actually going to go slightly down from our profile plane. I'm going to go offset negative one quarter of an inch. And I'm going to go distance to the top here. Scroll in and pick the top. And I'm going to go one eighth of an inch above the top. And I will say new component. Now that new component is just those two sides and I'm going to call it frame. While I'm at it, I'm going to open up this body list here and I'm going to say, create components from bodies. I'll just do it for one. I'll drag all the rest in and I'm going to call that piece Kumiko. So if I click on our Kumiko, I can turn it off and I can turn on and off the frame. Now, I need to turn back on my sketch and I will select the other pieces, the pieces that I didn't select before. Scroll up and I'll do the bottom one. One, two, three. 
I now can see that I have six selected and that's exactly what I needed to have. And I will say new body. We're going to start from the object. We'll start from the bottom of our frame. And I will go to object and I will select the top of our frame. And it says we cannot complete. This is a problem that keeps showing up in Fusion and I really wish they would fix it. So what you have to do if this happens is you have to select to go to two sides and instead of going from the bottom of the object to the top, you go from the plane to the top and the plane to the bottom. Now I can say new body and it will do exactly the same thing. It just happens to be two extra steps and a glitch that they still haven't fixed. So dear Autodesk, please fix this glitch because it shows up in probably about 30% of my videos that you I try to do this five or six times, and one out of those five or six times, it actually just stops working. All right, so what we have now is quite a thick box frame. So I don't really like how thick that is. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make that only, oh, not that one. I'm going to make it only slightly, slightly shorter than that. I'm not going to make it negative one quarter inch. I'm going to make it negative one eighth. And that should give us slightly less depth. It's still a bit thick, but that's okay. We're just going to do this for modeling purposes. Now, we're going to need to have a piece that goes across the bottom of our grid here. So I'm going to create an inset piece. I will click on this new sketch, and then I will hit P for project. I will pick the three other pieces, hit OK, and now you can see that we have this inside piece. So I can just hit finish sketch. I don't need to draw anything. And I want to click on this piece, and we are going to make it exactly one eighth of an inch thick. It's just going to go in the other direction. And we will say new body yet again. So now I have all those three pieces. That is my frame, including the bottom panel for the Kumiko itself, which you can now see is sitting in there. What I would do with this is I would quite literally just glue the whole thing together. I'm going to hit A for appearance, open up our solid wood, and I am going to pick our finished and stained versions. I always do my Kumiko from maple, so I'm going to pick this semi-gloss 3D maple and apply it to the entire piece. And I like to use a dark background when I am doing this kind of work. So I'm going to turn the frame dark, like a 3D walnut stain. I wouldn't actually use walnut for these pieces, generally speaking. I would generally just ebonize the wood, but there is no uh, ebonize wood feature here. So I use this dark 3D walnut uh, as a way to simulate it in Fusion 360. So that is my uh, top piece for a nice little box. If I was going to go on and turn this into a much uh, more fully featured box, the way that I would do this is I have this negative 1 8 inch here. I'm going to change this to be two sides, and I'm going to make this also negative 1 8 of an inch. So it is coming out in the other direction. And you can see that what's happening here is that this center piece is now protruding down below the, the, uh, the other side here. So what I'm going to do is I am going to make, I'm going to, sorry, I am going to scroll up, and I'm going to pick these four panels here. And I am going to say, instead of making them longer, I will drag them down. We're going to make it three inches long, and I will say new component. And hit OK. So now we have this inside piece here. This is awfully thick for an outside frame of a box, but we have these pieces. Actually, I needed to do that separately because we are modeling these in wood and it doesn't like 
it doesn't like having these new these pieces separate still. So we will do the same thing. We will pick those outside edges. We will say to object, the bottom here, and we will say new body. And I will put those in the new component that we had here. We'll call that box. And I think we're doing relatively well here. How big are those outside edges actually going to be? They just look so huge. Ah, yes, they're 7 eighths of an inch thick. So what we'll do is we will change that back here. Remember, we can always go back in our timeline. And I will say Edit Sketch. And I'm going to make those, instead of being 7 eighths of an inch thick, I'm going to make them a quarter of an inch thick. I'll hit Finish Sketch, and the whole thing starts to look an awful lot more delicate now. Remember, you can always make changes to things after the fact if that's what you want to do. The only other thing we need to do here is create a bottom for our box. So I will pick, whoops, I will pick the right icon, create a sketch, hit P, project out the dimensions of our sides, and now I will create a center point rectangle, and I will go to my dimension tool and dimension that these are going to be exactly one eighth of an inch. I'll make the two sides equal because it is a square box. Then I will pick one, two, three, four, five pieces of our bottom. And I'm going to make that distance negative one quarter. We will say new body again. And I will drag that into our box component. You can now see we have our four sides plus our bottom. We're going to cut a little rabbit for our bottom by hitting cut. And I will cut each side, right click and repeat, from that bottom of the box. And the bottom is going to cut its own rabbit into each of the four sides. So if we turn off the bottom, we can now see we have a nice eighth inch rabbit that is a quarter inch deep to glue that bottom into. So we have our frame. We have our Kumiko that sits in the frame. And if we turn both of them off, we can see that we have this box with its quarter inch sides and its quarter inch bottom. And that top piece, because it extrudes to the bottom like this, is going to get exactly keyed purchase into the bottom of our box. And I think we're doing pretty well. If I was going to go aesthetically crazy with this, I would make the bottom also stained dark. So when you open the box, you get a nice surprise that the bottom is actually dark. And when you flip it over, you see the same thing. OK, so that is a very simple introduction to how to model a Kumiko pattern. Uh, this is probably the most traditional of the uh, modern westernized Kumiko patterns that you'll see. It's definitely not the most popular in Japan, but uh, if you're anywhere outside Japan, this is the pattern you will see. Uh, it is mostly popularized by two woodworkers uh, who both write for fine wood fine for a fine woodworking magazine. Uh, the first one you'll see all over the place, his name is John Reed Fox, and he's an absolutely amazing designer. Uh, definitely check out some of his stuff if you get a chance. And he wrote an article a number of years ago for Fine Woodworking Magazine, and it used this particular hemp leaf pattern uh, in, a, uh, in a work of fine furniture. And his work was picked up by another writer for the magazine there. I believe he's actually the uh, general editor of the magazine now, whose name is Michael Pekovich. And uh, he wrote a bunch of articles about it and designed a whole series of furniture involving Kumiko patterns. And his usual pattern was also this, the hemp leaf. So Fine Woodworking has really been pushing the Kumiko over the last four or five, six years. And it has become incredibly popular in the woodworking community. So now you know a little bit about the history of it in the West and how to model it. We're going to do a few more Kumiko panels over the next uh, you know, the next couple of weeks. We're certainly not going to do Kumiko in every project, but I will show you how to model some of the other complex patterns that are a little more involved than this. 
and I'll show you how to do them on a larger scale. If you have any questions about Kumiko or modeling in general, please leave them in the comments below. Like, share, and subscribe if you wouldn't mind, and since we do so many live classes, ring the bell if you want to ever join us. You can always toss your questions in the chat then, and I will see what I can do about answering them on the spot. So thank you for joining us today. We are done, and feel free to let us know any questions you might have. And of course, I mention this from time to time, I, I don't dwell on it every video, but these models are available for you if you want them. So uh, if you'd like a copy of the model, all I need you to do is send me an email or a message on one of our platforms and say, can I have the model? And we'll give it to you. You can download it, edit it, and whatever. They are totally free, just like our live stream and recorded classes. If you're looking for individual tuition, of course, you can contact us. And we do training for individuals, for groups, for corporate groups, and everything in 3D modeling, in other woodworking topics, and in design in general. Great. So we are done for the moment, and I will see you in the next class. Hope you have fun modeling and working in your shop today. Bye-bye.